Thank you for tuning into my video blog, Making Music. My name's Teresa, also known as DJ Tree on 107.7 WFCS, New Britain and Hartford. Tonight we're here with Joe DeRace, who will join us on Skype from the Hudson Valley in New York. Joe's music is gaining widespread popularity, and he's here to tell us about it. Thank you for joining us tonight, Joe. Why don't you introduce yourself to our YouTube viewers? Hi, this is Joe DeRace of the Joe DeRace Band. Joe, when I listen to your music, it's very clear that you have a very special place in your heart for New York. So why don't you talk about where you're from? Yep, I grew up in the Bronx. Um, just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a city kid, and uh, actually one of our new songs is called New York City. And uh, it's, it's so cool. <laughs> it's a great song. Can you tell me a little bit about the creation of the Joe DeRace band? I mean, where did these guys come from? Did you post ads? Are they friends of yours? I, um, I uh, just put out, uh, the album came out last November. So this coming November 26th, which is, happens to be my birthday, is uh, the first year anniversary to the release of Ebb and Flow. And I knew that when I released the album that I wanted to have a band uh, with me because for about four or five years before the release of the album, I was playing just solo as an acoustic uh, guitar, you know, singer-songwriter kind of thing. So in January of this year, I put uh, ads for, uh, for, for a band, and it started um, with uh, the drummer. Uh, I, I put an ad one day in February, and the next day I was on the phone with Chris, and uh, a few days later we met in a room that I had um, uh, in a studio. Um, and I knew from the first song, which was Anything For You, that he was the guy. Um, you know, the next day I put an ad for a bass player, and the following weekend we had met Steve, our bass player, and he was in the band. Uh, and the good thing about them is that, for me, it was a no-brainer. They're, you know, you know, they bring so much experience. Uh, Steve alone uh, is, is a musician of 25 years, professional. Uh, this is, he's a full-time musician. He's worked with Davy Jones, he's toured with him, he's toured and worked and recorded with people like Ray Manzarek of The Doors, um, Pete Best, the original Beatle drummer. Um, I mean, the list is endless, so for, for, for me to have them in a room, it's like, this is karaoke. You know, I mean, they're just, they're the music machine and I just, I just show up and, 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 and do the thing. So, um, with, um, with, with the electric guitar, now I'm not a very strong lead guitar player. I'm more of a rhythm guitar player. But I was trying to hold my own uh, before we found Rod or Rodman. And um, it took about two or three extra months after meeting Chris and Steve before we, we, we uh, met Rod. And, you know, during, you know, before meeting Rodman, I was doing the guitar work live and it was, uh, it was a little sloppy. <laughs> but, you know, I plowed through it. You're clearly a busy guy. You guys are touring, you're writing music, you're managing the band. I mean, with all of these priorities, how do you keep yourself and also your band motivated? That's a great question. Um, you know, it's, it's always on my mind to keep them happy and interested, invested. You know, we're, we're starting to write together more. Um, I have some songs that, um, are not on the album that we've been performing live that were songs that I had sort of taken out of the Joe archives <laughs> and sat down with these guys and said let's let's flush this out let's let's work on this because I can't finish this or I can't come up with an idea for that part and, and so that that's that's great because it, it's 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 a it, it brings out more of a you know yeah it's the Joe band but they're part of it and they should have a voice and in, 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 in the new material. So that's one thing that we do. Um, also, just booking as many shows as we can. You know, these guys are musicians and if you're not feeding them shows, it's like not feeding them food. <laughs> Today, the music industry is saturated with raw new talent. So if someone is interested in getting into music and they say, uh, you know, I don't even know where to start. What advice would you have for them? You know, um, I don't know if you can see, see this guy right here. His name is Dave Grohl, and he used to play in a band called Nirvana. He's my hero, and I'll tell you why. Um, not only because 
you know, of everything that he's done musically, uh, but because he, he works really hard. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was saying before about, you know, working harder and the uphill climb and all that. You know, he's working just as hard, if not harder, um, to, to be on top. And, you know, he has to be one of the hardest working musicians of our generation, I think. Um, he wouldn't be successful as he is if he didn't work as hard as he does, um, you know, for however many years, 20 or 22 years of his career. Um, I read an interview once uh, where he was quoted saying, I'm just going to paraphrase this, um, you know, saying that musicians, if you're starting out, musicians should go to a garage sale, right? and pick up an old, broken up, beat up instrument, whether it's a guitar or a, or a drum set or whatever it is. My very first instrument, believe it or not, I found it in a garbage pile in the Bronx on the block that I lived that somebody just threw out their bass. It had no pickups, it had no electronics, it had no strings. I just took the wood pieces home and I just threw some, slapped some strings on it with no pickups and that's how I learned how to play, play the bass. Um, you know, and, continue, and, and the thing is you have to suck at it. If you don't suck at it, you're not paying your dues. You're not, you know, it's a, it's a rite of passage. You have to really stink at it because you learn it that you're learning from it that way. And then you have to continue to stink at it and then get some friends together and they're going to suck at it too. And then when, and then all of a sudden you've got a band. The next thing you know, you're getting better and everyone's having the time of their lives because this is what they want to do. And that's what, and that's what happened with Nirvana. You know, and, and I say, now these are my words, not Dave's work, uh, words, it's really about plain, old-fashioned hard work and a lot of patience uh, that gets the job done. So go out there, do it, you know. No one's going to stop you except you, or maybe your mom and dad will, you know, depending on how old you are. <laughs> I love every song on the CD Ebb and Flow, but I know that you must have a favorite, so come on. Which song is your favorite? I love all my songs. They're like my kids. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I like Bobby more than I like Sally. Oh, you know. Um, uh, my favorite songs really change. Uh, it depends on you know my mood. But right now, I'm really loving Crash uh, because it's so great live. It's a fun song to listen to, uh, to sing to, and to play live. Um, we get a huge response from the audience, so it's a it's a crowd pleaser every time we play it. Um, and, and here's something that you probably wouldn't know um, or don't know. Uh, I'm also happy with it being on the album just in general because it almost didn't make it. Um, it took me about four hours, or four hours, four years to record this little ditty. And I was wrapping up the recording. We were really just getting up to uh, post-production phase when Crash came to me. And I just, and, it, and, it, and, it, and I wrote it so fast. And that's another thing that's very rare with me. It takes me a long time to write a song. Crash just came like that. And um, I took it to my producer and um, I said, listen, I know we're finishing up the album, but what do you think of this? You know, and he goes, <laughs> he goes, dude, you got, you got to get this song on the album. He's like, there's, you can't not have it. So had I not come up with the song idea at that time, it, it may not have made the cut. And for those viewers who are interested in learning more about you, where can they go? Where can we find you? Fans can also find out more about uh, my music and where we're playing on my website at joederays.com. That's J-O-E-D-U-R-A-E-S.com. And uh, for all you Facebookers out there, we also have a, a band Facebook page. And uh, just look up Joe DeRay's hyphen band on Facebook and you'll find us and like us and uh, get all the news and all the latest and greatest. Well, DJ Tree, thank you so much. This was a pleasure. I had so much fun and uh, you are just dynamite. I know I appreciate everything you do for me and, and, and the band every single weekend. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great people like you that, that really matter and, and help spread the word. So thank you so much. If you guys are interested to learn more about Joe DeRace, as he mentioned, go visit his website or send him a thumbs up on Facebook. And if you're interested to learn more about me, I encourage you to please listen to my show every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to noon on 107.7 WFCS New Britain and Hartford. You can listen online at tunein.com or live365.